The great geographical discoveries of the 15th-16th centuries made by Western Europe constituted a decisive stage in the formation of a real image on the earthly globe and had complex consequences, which exerted a profound influence on the evolution of mankind as a whole. Until the era of great geographical discoveries, knowledge of the earthly globe was zonal and incomplete and was formed due to explorations made independently of each other, in different regions of the world. Europeans knew the Near East and North Africa very well and had vague knowledge of the rest of Asia and Africa. Navigation in the Northern Atlantic Ocean, as far as Iceland and Greenland, including the unspeakable discovery of the northeastern shore of North America, was practiced in the X-15 centuries almost only by the Scandinavian peoples, the widening of the contacts between the West and the East as a result of the Crusades, as well as the attempts to find new paths for Western trade with Asia and the Far East and to establish relations with the Mongols, in order to fight the Muslims, were the basis for the conduct of Europeans' travels to Asia between the 13th 15th centuries, such as those made to the residents of the Great Khan at Karakoram by Giovanni da Pian del Carpine, Willem van Ruysbroek, in China by Marco Polo 1271-1291, or in India by the Russian merchant Afanasi Nikitin. The travels made by Europeans to Asia and the descriptions left by them, such as the accounts of Marco Polo, played an important role in the knowledge of Asia by Europeans. The trips were made on land roads, extremely long, dangerous and unsafe, did not offer encouraging prospects and therefore did not constitute a starting point for the great geographical discoveries, which in the 15th and 16th centuries were mainly maritime and had other objectives in other directions. The civilization of pre-Columbian America has long remained separate from the influences of the Old World. It was colonized by hunter-gatherers from Asia through Alaska 15,000 years ago. They quickly scattered throughout the territory of the Americas. The Americas encompassed a linguistic diversity. Between 6,000-2,000 I hour, in the territory of present-day Mexico began to be grown plants such as corn, potatoes, beans, tomatoes and pumpkin, these being more productive plants than cereals in Europe. This has led to a demographic increase, creating dense agricultural civilizations. Pre-Columbian America included hunter-gatherer tribes, as well as dense agricultural civilizations in Mexico, Mayans, Aztecs, the Andes, Incas, region, and the Mississippi Valley, Calvokia, citation needed. There were no domestic animals. Bronze or iron metallurgy was not practiced, as the societies were still in the Neolithic stage. The wheel also had not been invented. The Mayans and Aztecs used ideograms as a writing system. Europeans conducted maritime and land exploration expeditions, which led to the establishment of lasting and substantial contacts between previously separated areas of civilization. In addition to various countries that were not sufficiently developed to conduct expeditions, Islamic civilization was centered in the Old World and had contacts with China, India, Black Africa and Europe, so it did not feel the need to search for new roads. In 1405-1433, China initiated seven expeditions commanded by the outcasts, Zhongyi and Champa, Indonesia, India, the island of Ormuz, the Red Sea, Aden, the Gulf of Africa, Mogadishu, Malindi. As for maritime explorations in the Atlantic Ocean, the Genoese expedition of the brothers Ugolino and Badino Vivaldi, organized in 1291, who wanted to reach the parts of India crossing the ocean, ships were shipwrecked. Instead, Genoese and Portuguese navigators in the service of Portugal discovered the Canary Archipelagos, Madeira, and the Azores, off the west coast of Africa. Colonized by the Portuguese and the Spanish, they served as nautical bases and stages of Iberian ships sailing in the Atlantic Ocean, contributing to the exploration of the west coasts of Africa by the Portuguese. The Arabs had wider geographical knowledge, apart from the Near East, tropical Africa, eastern Central and southeastern Asia, and Southeast Asia. Indians and Chinese knew Asia and East Africa. Europeans, Arabs and South Asian peoples had zonal knowledge, incomplete and insufficiently intertwined that did not provide an overview and real picture of the earthly globe.
In the 15th century, the increase in the consumption of Eastern goods, the development of trade and navigation and the rise of an active merchantry in the West pushed Europeans to be intensely preoccupied with finding other ways to the Spice Islands in order to establish their supremacy over the trade in Oriental products, bringing enormous gains. Since the 15th century, the intensification of the trade and money circulation has led to the increase of the need for precious metals, to a real thirst for gold, mirrored in the feverish search for precious metals outside Europe. Politically divided states, such as Italy and Germany, were quickly removed from maritime and colonial competition by unified states, which had superior resources. Improvements and innovations have been made in the construction, propulsion and handling of ships and in their orientation at sea, and progress has been made in the field of geography and cartography. Since the 15th century, for travels on the Atlantic Ocean, caravels were used, built to face the large waves of the ocean, being ships of small or medium tonnage, 100 to 150 tons, having a high stern and lower bow, and were endowed with a sail that allowed them to use the wind not only from the back, but also sideways. The handling of ships has been improved through the steering maneuvered from the deck through a system of levers and a wheel wheel. For orientation, the compass from the 13th century was used. In order to establish the position of the ships, in the XIII 15th centuries the methods of calculating latitude and longitude were improved with the help of the astrolabe, known to Byzantines and Arabs and perfected by Europeans in solar declination tables. Progress has been made in rendering the geographical image of the world, in terms of Europe, the Near East and North Africa, correctly depicted in the costumer of the Catalan Angelino Dulcert in 1339, in the Catalan Atlas of 1375 or in the map of Promaro. Interest in precious metals had grown, creating the concept of a gold rush. The Europeans believed that Africa had vast gold resources, but they did not know exactly where, for the Muslims held the monopoly there. Marco Polo reinforced the idea that many riches can be found in India or China. In 1480, the chase for spices began products that are added to foods preserved with salt to improve their taste, pepper, cloves, ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, saffron, etc., because they grew only in certain geographical areas. The most productive areas were India, on the southwest coast, on the coast of Malabar, Ceylon Island, Sri Lanka, and the islands of Indonesia, Molus Islands. Spices were imported from antiquity, but consumption in Europe increased after the Crusades, when Europeans came into contact with the Muslim world, learning to use spices more often. China was also an outlet. 75% of the spices came through the Red Sea, 15% came through Mediterranean ports, and 10% through northern sea ports. The emergence of early capitalism stimulated interests for trade at sea, resulting in the formation of the first commercial companies, at the same time, the Silk Road is losing its importance. The European states centralized themselves, putting the courts in order, which disturbed the nobles who did not want to be investigated, so because they could not manifest themselves, they went in search of new areas. Competition and rivalry between states have intensified expeditions. Christian missionary ISM was active in the Spanish world, having a universal vocation. The myth of land of saints. John was also widespread, which claimed that beyond the Muslim world there was a certain Christian country that could become an ally against Muslims. Portugal Explorations The era of great geographical discoveries was opened by the Portuguese who began exploring the west coast of Africa. Henry the Navigator combined the organization of expeditions to explore the west coast of Africa with the action of economic exploitation of the discovered lands. Pushed by the desire to achieve ever-increasing gains from the trade in gold, ivory, black slaves, the Portuguese gradually explored the west coasts of Africa, reaching Cape Bahador, Cape Bronco, the mouths of the Senegal River and Cape Verde, the Cape Verde Islands, the shores of the Gulf of Guinea, the mouths of the Zaire River or the Congo, and reaching in 1485 up to 22 degrees south latitude. The names given by the Portuguese to some lands on the western shores of Africa, Ivory Coast, Gold Coast, Slave Coast, sharply mirrored the nature of the trade practiced by them on the African lands. 
In 1488, Bartholomew Diaz reached the southern end of the continent, originally called the Cape of Storms, and then the Cape of Good Hope. The Portuguese Pero da Cogulhau made a trip on the Mediterranean Sea Red Sea East Africa Ethiopia route, which contributed to a better knowledge by the Portuguese of the possibilities of reaching from the southern and eastern shores of Africa by sea to India. Through the achievements and knowledge gained, the two trips made a precious contribution to the preparation of Vasco da Gama's expedition. The expedition led by Vasco da Gama started from Portugal in July 1497, his four ships sailing along the west coast of Africa to the Cape of Good Hope, then along the eastern coast of the continent, through the Strait of Mozambique and the Indian Ocean, until the west coast of India, in the port of Calcutta, where they arrived in May 1498. The Portuguese returned by the same route to Portugal in August 1499. The expedition led by Vasco da Gama resulted in the achievement of the main objective pursued by the Europeans in their expeditions, finding the direct sea route from the west to India. Spanish Explorations The Discovery of America The Spanish, whose path to India through the Atlantic Ocean in the southern and eastern direction was closed by the Portuguese, directed their efforts in the western direction. The main initiator of the project to reach from the Iberian Peninsula to Asia crossing the Atlantic Ocean in a western direction, Christopher Columbus. Columbus estimated the distance in a direct line from east to west, between the Iberian Peninsula and the east shore of Asia at about a third of the actual distance. He did not suspect the existence of another continent, America, located between the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. His project was approved in 1492 by the kings of Spain, Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile, because it represented for Spain, which avoided violating the area of explorations to the south and east of Portugal, the only way to discover the maritime route westwards to Asia. Leaving Spain in August 1492, the Columbus-led expedition, after crossing the Atlantic, arrived on 12 October 1492 in a native island Guanahani, named by the Spanish San Salvador, probably the island of Watling in the Bahamas archipelago. Later, Columbus discovered several islands, Cuba, Juana and Haiti, which they called Espanola. Convinced that he had landed on the eastern shores of Asia, Columbus returned in 1493. To investigate the discovered lands, considered by Columbus to be the eastern shores of Asia, Columbus conducted three expeditions, 1493 to 1496, 1498 to 1500, 1502 to 1504, during which he explored the archipelagos of the Lesser Antilles and the Great Antilles, the island of Jamaica, and the eastern coast of Central America and the northern shores of South America. The discovery had a huge significance, the proportions of which can only be assessed according to its multiple consequences, both for Europe and Spain, as well as for America. Columbus's first expedition led to the straining of relations between Spain and Portugal, which sought, in opposite geographical directions, the sea route to India. After fierce disputes between Spain and Portugal, the Treaty of Tordesillas of 1494 was concluded, by which the two countries divided their areas of geographical exploration and maritime, commercial and colonial domination in the world. The Portuguese and Spanish areas were bounded by a line that passed 370 leagues west of the Cape Verde Islands, the Portuguese area stretching east of this line and the Spanish area to the west. At the antipode, the line of demarcation, established by the convention concluded between Spain and Portugal at Zaragoza 1529, crossed Indonesia, the Islands of Spices. The other European states did not recognize the division of the world between Spain and Portugal, returning, as they developed, free participation in maritime, commercial and colonial expansion. Magellan's expedition around the world. After realizing that they had discovered new lands, the Spanish looked for a way to reach the Spice Islands to the west, and the merit of finding it went to the Portuguese navigator settled in Spain, Fernando Magalhães, known as Magellan. A squadron commanded by Magellan, set off from Spain in September 1519, after crossing the Atlantic and exploring the eastern shore of South America, discovered the strait in the south of the continent, called the Strait of Magellan, November 1520. After crossing the Pacific Ocean, so named because of the lack of storms December 1520 to February 1521, the squadron reached the archipelago of the Philippines, where during a clash with the locals, Magellan was killed in April 1521. 
Under the leadership of Sebastian Elcano, the only caravel left, Victoria, after crossing the archipelagos of Indonesia, the Indian Ocean and, bypassing the Cape of Good Hope, the Atlantic Ocean, returned to Spain in September 1522. The expedition had bypassed the ground, crossing 85,700 kilometers in 1084 days, and out of five caravels with about 250 men, only one had returned, with 18 men. The most wonderful deed and the greatest achievement that has ever happened had been committed. The discovery of the sea route from Spain west to the Spice Islands had no practical consequences, since this route was longer than the Portuguese route to India. Spain began conquering Mexico, Central America and South America, with immense wealth and resources. Spain was no longer interested in trade with the Spice Islands. Magellan's expedition had a special significance for the progress of geography, proving the sphericity of the Earth and the possibility of its circumnavigation, and contributing to a better knowledge of the earthly globe as a whole. Explorations of the English, French and Dutch in the northern regions. The central and southern regions of the Atlantic were dominated by the Portuguese and Spanish. The French, English, and Dutch tried to find sea routes to Asia, India, and the Spice Islands, either to the northwest, bypassing North America, or to the northeast, bypassing Asia. The Northwest Maritime Route was sought after by the English and the French. John Cabot explored in 1497 and in 1498 the northeastern shores of North America, New Scotland, Newfoundland Terra, Labrador, and Martin Frobisher in 1576 to 1578, John Davis in 1585 to 1587, Henry Hudson in 1610 and William Baffin in 1615 to 1616 explored the region between the west coasts of Greenland, Baffin Island and Hudson Bay. The Frenchman Jacques Cartier explored between 1534 to 1542 the shores of the Bay of St. Lawrence. The explorations of the English and French on the northeastern shores of North America, being carried out at latitudes too northern, where navigation was hampered or blocked by ice, could not lead to the discovery of the sea route to India through the northwest. Instead, due to the wealth in fish and furry animals and the possibilities of trading with the local population, the first English and French colonies on the eastern shores of North America were born, starting from the 17th century. The sea route to the northeast was sought after by the English and the Dutch. The expedition led by Hugh Willoughby and Richard Chancellor from 1553 to 1554 penetrated the White Sea, and from there they reached Moscow by land, laying the groundwork for Anglo-Russian maritime trade relations. The Dutch expeditions led by Willem Barents arrived only as far as the sea area between the islands of Spitsbergen and Novaya Zemlya, not exceeding the Kara Sea at the east, due to ice, thus the English and the Dutch abandoned this route unfavorable to the navigation conditions of that time. Explorations of the Russians, the conquest of Siberia. The unification and centralization of the Russian state and the conquest of the Tatar Khanates of Kazan and Astrakhan 1552-1556 created favorable conditions for the exploration and domination by the Russians of the huge eastern territories of the Ural Mountains. The exploration and conquest of Siberia was carried out by hunters of animals with expensive fur, merchants, Cossacks, supported by the state, interested in mastering the land with large economic resources. In the 16th century, Russian merchants from the Stroganov family of merchants, from the town of Solvestov, on the northern Davina, which maintained trade relations with the populations beyond the Ural Mountains, received from Tsar Ivan IV successive privileges to explore, exploit and colonize the territory between the Volga and Irtas river basins of western Siberia. The Stroganovs hired Cossacks from the Don and the Volga, led by Hetman or Mak Timofievich, and during the expedition of 1581 to 1585, his detachment reinforced with Russian soldiers sent by the Tsar entered western Siberia. The dominion of Siberia was carried out in stages, at a rapid pace despite the huge expanse. By the end of the 16th century the Russians reached as far as the Irtas and Obi rivers, at the beginning of the 17th century in the Mangazay region, rich in animals with expensive fur, reaching the course of the Yenisei river, and crossed the region between the Yenisei and the Lena, and by the middle of the century they reached the shores of the Sea of Okhotsk in the Pacific Ocean. Russian navigators explored part of the Siberian coastline of the frozen northern ocean. 
In 1648 Simeon Desnevin feted Alexev Popov, starting from the northeastern coast of Siberia, from the mouth of the Kolama River into the ocean, advanced with their ships along the shore of the frozen North Ocean to the east, passed through the strait separating Asia from America, called the Bering Strait, and reached the Siberian shore of the Pacific Ocean, to near the coasts of the Kamchatka Peninsula. Like the Spanish conquistadors, the Russians took advantage of their military superiority and laid the foundations of a huge colonial empire in Siberia.